Right, yeah. Um, today I'm going to be talking about filter, which is an array method, and it does what it says on the tin, basically. So it takes an array and filters it based on a test that you give it, and returns a new array with elements of the original array that passed the test that you've given it. So I've tried to capture that in the next slide with uh, So you've got an array of numbers here and what you want to do is you want to filter them and then return a new array. Um, so the test I've left blank at the moment but say you wanted to return a new array of positive numbers what you'd want to do is have a test that tests whether each element in this array is a positive number or not. So it would take the first element, run it through that test, and then push it to that new array if it passes that test. Um, so let's say number greater than zero. So it will take minus one, test it, see if the number is greater than zero. It's not, so it will discard it. And it will do that for every element in the array. So can anyone tell me what this is going to return? Three, four, one, yeah. Um, so what, can anybody tell me what happens if there's a missing value in the original array? What's it going to return now? So I'll tell you, it's um, basically it just ignores any empty values in the original array. It'll skip over them. So it'll return the same thing. I um, can't remember what I put there now, but I'll put, I think it was minus two or something. Um, also, if this test is something that none of the elements will pass, for example, say greater than four, so it's going to pass each element of this array through that test. Uh, so minus one, is that greater than four? No, it's not and none of these elements will pass that test. Four's obviously not greater than four. So what it's actually going to return is an empty array. And that makes sense because it makes an empty array first and then tests each of these elements of the array. Um, so that's different to find. Does anyone remember what find does if it doesn't um, have an element that passes the test? Yeah, so it returns undefined. So that's a slight difference between filter and find. Obviously another difference would be that it returns every element that passes the test and find only returns the first one. So yeah, points to note. So yeah, filter can only be used on arrays, so it's an array method. Um, doesn't change the original array, so that's basically what I was saying. It takes the original array and then returns a new array with every element that passes the test that you give it. Okay. And yeah, I think I've covered everything. And that was just, yeah, it ignores elements without a value. So this is the general syntax. Everything in green is what you need to put in. So everything in red then is optional. So today we're gonna to focus just on the green thing. So it's expecting a function and it's taking a current value, which will be the element of the array. So this will become clearer when you see an example. Um, but basically, yeah, we're going to have a function inside filter, and it's going to take an element at a time, and it's going to do some test on it within these curly braces. And then if we want to make it look a bit neater, we can use the ES6 syntax, which is just using an arrow function. So yeah, let's do some examples then. So the first example I've got is similar to the one I've shown on the slides. You've just got an array of numbers. 
and you want to return a new array of the positive numbers. So I'm going to do the first couple of examples and then I'll ask people for the next few. So this one, I'm going to define a new array. I'm going to call it positive numbers. And then to get the positive numbers from this array, I'm going to have to use the array filter method on this array. So I do the name of my array, numbers, dot filter, and then just build the skeleton of it first. So like I said, filter is expecting a function, and that function takes an argument, which is the current value. So that will be, first iteration will be minus one, and then minus two, minus three, so on, oh, sorry, three, and then so on. Um, so a sensible name for this would probably just be number. So that's just showing it's taking a single number at a time. And then between these curly braces, you want your test that you're running on that number that it takes. So my test is going to be, if I want to return the positive numbers, I want to do number greater than zero. So if I console log that, hopefully that's going to give me an array of the positive numbers. Does that make sense? So next example. So this says correct ID numbers are exactly 10 digits long. Please return the correct ID numbers. So you've got an array of ID numbers and they're all different lengths you probably can't see but this is sort of a real real life scenario where you might have a database with lots of different ID numbers and you want to filter out the ones that aren't the correct length someone's made a typo error or something so what you want to do here similar to the last one I'm gonna say I'm gonna define a new array and call it correct ID numbers let's try and be descriptive and I'm gonna take my original array filter it, function, and then in this function I'm passing it each of these IDs one at a time. So I'm going to call this ID. And I want to return IDs which have an exact length of 10 digits. So I want to do ID dot length equals 10 and you can see here it's returned two of the IDs in that original array so that's just telling me this one is 10 digits long and this one's 10 digits long I think this is 9 and this is 11, so that's filtered that out correctly. And then actually, if you wanted to make this um, a bit easier to read maybe, you can use the um, arrow function. So you can get rid of this, get rid of all that, get rid of the keyword return, and then just have an arrow like that and then that should return the same thing so that's a bit easier to read it's just all in one line <clears throat> uh, right next example so I hope people have been paying attention so I'm going to start asking people now <laughs> um, so what you want to do here is return the numbers which are multiples of five so I'm going to call this multiples of five. Right. So where would I start here? What do I want to What do I want to filter? Integers. Yeah. So integers dot filter. And then I'm going to want a function inside there. And what is 
the argument that I'm passing to this function. What's a good name for that? Numbers or number? Yeah. Let's <laughs> call it integer. Yeah, you can call it integer. You can call it value. Yeah, integer. So yeah, that's copying what it's already called. So that's probably the most sensible name for it, integer. And then you want to write your test that you're running on this integer. So I'm going to write integer. Um, right. So if I highlight this bit here, um, G, can you tell me if you I... just call my name. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ask you this. So if I pass this number in as integer, what's that going to give me? So this first element, what's that going to give me? Um, zero. Yeah, okay. So I was hoping that um, someone would say two. Oh, right. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it's about understanding what this actually means. So some people, if, you've not, if you're not familiar with JavaScript syntax, might think this means divide. This isn't, isn't the division operator. This is um, modulus. So this is giving you the remainder, basically. So we want to say if the remainder, when dividing by 5, is 0, then obviously the number is a multiple of 5. There you go, it's giving you an array of multiples of five. All right, so now they get a bit harder actually. <laughs> okay. Yep. In the previous example. Yep. Oh, I just closed it. <laughs> yeah, this one. What happened if in the list of integers you've got, for example, zero? Uh, Is zero a multiple of five? That's true, yeah. So <laughs> if you do 0 mod 5, it's going to give you, there's no remainder. So it's going to return that in the array, I think. Yeah. And, and obviously, this isn't a multiple of 5. So how, will, how can we change this example to make sure that the multiple is always a proper multiple? Right? So usually, one condition that the modulus is 0, which is correct. But we're ignoring that each integer should be at least as big as uh, 5, right? It should be greater or equal than 5. So how can we tell that? Okay, so what you can do inside the return is you can have multiple things. So if I do this, so I say integer divided by 5, uh, integer remainder 5 is 0, and integer is at least 5. So there it's ignored 0 basically. So that's how you do um, two different conditions. So if you want to test it with one thing and another thing, then you'd also need these brackets here. So I don't think it would work if you remove that. Yeah, it just gives you an empty array. So you need to make sure you have those brackets there as well when you have more than one condition that you're testing. Um, Technically speaking, the reason why you need the, the parentheses is not because you have more than one condition, okay. it's because you are moving you're splitting the conditions across multiple lines. Okay. If you put everything in one line, the parentheses are not uh, required. That should work, yeah. And one, can, can I ask uh, something? Because I know this is a bit off topic, but it, it's a bit relevant as well. So, because you have two conditions, right? Integer is modulus 5 is 0, and then integer is about 5. Do you think the order, and I know that this is a, this is a very subtle thing, do you think the order matters? So would you recommend to put these two conditions in that way, or will you swap them, and why? Um, 
outcome. Why? Just because the logic of how you're thinking through it. You want it, you want it to be bigger than five before you start providing it. Maybe it's smart. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. So again, yes. So that's that's a good point, right? It's more readable. But the most important thing here is, is, is efficiency, right? So what do you think is cheaper from a computing point of view? Evaluating if a number is greater than five or dividing a number and getting the modules? So what you're saying, if we had lots of zeros, is this no, what? No, no, it's not because of the amount of zeros. It's because uh, so you have the AND operator, AND, AND, double yeah. ampersand, right? If the first condition is not met, yeah. It doesn't do the other one, correct. correct. Yeah, that's what that's I'm why, saying. That's why if you have multiple conditions, it's better to bring the cheapest ones to the beginning. Because if the cheapest ones fail, yeah. you give up. Yeah, so you'd want, in this situation, you'd want to swap them. Exactly. And you'd want to have have it test whether the number's zero first, or whether the number's going to be able to, you want to return it first. And when, then and then test whether it has where it's a multiple of five. I mean, where the how where the number zero is in the array doesn't matter because you're going to look at the array, right? Yeah. But the difference is that whenever you spot a zero, that iteration will be quicker. Yeah. Will be cheaper. Yeah. Because, because it will stop at this. Exactly. Yeah. If and it won't you run stop that. Them at yeah. the moment, yeah. it will always divide first. Right? I know this is very subtle, this isn't going to make any difference for this kind of algorithms, but it's good to bear in mind from a computing point of view in the long term, yeah. try to do the cheapest operation first. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, it still return the same thing, but when it comes to this one, it's just uh, stopped to this first condition, because yes. it's not met that first condition, so it hasn't ran this second bit. Exactly. So yeah, it's more efficient. <coughs> Right, um, so this example, you've got players and you've got an array. Can anybody tell me what this is an array of? Objects. Objects, yeah. So there's an array of objects. Each player represents one object. So they have a first name property, they have a last name property, and they have a ranking property. So I've just said players in the top 16 qualify for the tournament. Return the full name of players who will qualify for the tournament. So I'm going to define a new array called qualifiers. And where would I start with this then? And then what am I passing to the function as an argument? So what's a good name? Yeah. So each object, remember, is just representing a single player. So I think player is a good name. And then the test I want to do is I want to access the ranking property of this object and see if that um, the value is less than or equal to 16. So if they're in the top 16, basically. So how would I do that? I do player dot ranking is less than or equal to 16. So what's this going to return me? Yeah, so that's going to give me, if I run it, an array of objects that have been filtered based on their ranking, um, which is not why I asked for. I wanted the full name of players. This has returned me the, the whole object, basically. So what I want to do now is somehow return the first name and the last name of the players that passed that test. So how would I do that? Can anybody tell me what I'd use here? Just an array with two strings. So, I, yeah. So I want Mark Selby and Marco Fu in a in an array. Yeah. So what Victor said is, we want to use map here. So what you can do is do dot map 
Um, and then map expects a function as well. Is everybody familiar with map? I mean, this is the way I do it. Inside, yes. So yeah, you can't just do dot dot first name here. That won't work because it's inside an array. So you need to map through that array first, and then access the um, the properties of those objects within that array. So yeah, you use map here, um, and it's taking well, got it here basically. It's taking this array. Um, so again, it's going to be player probably. What's that? Is it not a new array technically? Yeah, this is a new array, yeah. So should we not call it something different than what the original array was? What do you mean? Yeah, so it's... Oh, okay, okay. And then what map does, it basically takes an array and returns an array of the same length and it maps each element. So it takes each element in the original array and maps it through a function and returns something and you can define that function, what you want it to do. So what we want here is we want to take each element and then return the first name and the last name. So what we're going to do is we're going to use backticks. Um, so this will be the first name, this will be the last name. What do I want to type in here for that to that to work. Yep, player dot first name. And in here, similarly, player dot last name. So that's given me an array of two names of the people who've qualified for the tournament. So yeah, just using filter and then mapping through the array that it gives you, the filtered array. Right, last example. <clears throat> so this one's a bit more complicated. So you've got a supermarket array and each of these objects within the array represent an aisle in the supermarket. So you've got the cereal aisle, you've got the snacks aisle and the frozen aisle. And then within each um, aisle, you've got a property which is telling you um, items which are in that aisle. So um, for the cereal aisle, you've got different items within that aisle. So for example, three could be Cocoa Pops or something. 14 could be Frosties, you know. Um, so that's what that is. And it's saying each item ID refers to an item stocked by the supermarket. Each item in the supermarket has an ID. So that's a positive number between one and 100. Each supplier, uh, sorry, a, a supplier problem means that Items with ID less than 50 are no longer available. So basically, you can see what it's going to want you to do. It's going to want you to filter these arrays um, for items that are greater than 50, greater than or equal to 50, as less than 50 are no longer available. So this wouldn't be available anymore, neither would this. This would, though. But the problem we've got here is within an array itself. And I've said, aisles with less than two items left after this supplier problem have to close. Um, and you want to return an array of the names of aisles that will remain open. So basically, you're going to have to filter this whole array based on the length of this property once it's been filtered. So it's a filter within a filter, basically. So the way I'm going to start this, I'm going to go let open aisles. And then I'm going to want to filter my supermarket. 
And then this is taking each object at a time, which I'm going to call aisle. And then inside this, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, so you're going to want to filter again, but I'm going to call it. So you're going to want to filter this. So I'm going to call it let filtered items. And then you want to do, you want to access this object's property. Yep, yep, item IDs. And then I want to get the length. No, I don't. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you want to. So, this is going to give you this array basically so far, and I want to do a filter on that. So, I just do dot filter here. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, you're going to have a function inside here and a test. So, this is taking this array, and then each it's taking each element, so it's going to be a number or an ID. So, I'm just going to call this ID. Item ID. Item ID, yeah. <laughs> Plural is item ID, the singular is item ID. Okay. Call that item ID to match um, the plural. And then what test do I want here for this array? So if you read here, it says items with ID less than 50 are no longer available. So I want 50 and everything above. So I want basically what Victor said, but 50 are equal. Um, so, yeah, so this filter is returning something at the moment, and you can see this filter is not returning anything at the moment, so I want to do a return. To return the filtered items as the return of the supermarket. Yeah, so you'd want to. You'd want to find the length of this now. So this is returning you a new array of the elements that have passed that test. So for this for this array, it will return just an array with fifty one in it, and then I want to do that filtered item dot length. And then whether that's greater than or equal to two. So can anyone spot a problem here? So I'm going to console log this and see what it returns. So at the moment, yeah. So it's fil what it's literally done is just filtered out um, the serial aisle, which is correct, because that now has had these two filtered out of its array, inner array, and the length is only one, which doesn't meet this criteria here. So it's filtered this out. But what I wanted was return an array of the names of the aisles that remain open. So, so now, yeah, what I want to do here is just map through the array that it's returned and return the aisle name. So I do dot map function and this is taking aisle. and then all I want to do in here is just for each object I want to return its name. So I do aisle dot aisle name. And that's returned the, the names of the aisles that are remaining open. So the serial aisle is closed. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah there so it's a filter within a filter, and then you're mapping through the array that it's given you to return a property of that array. Uh, sorry, yeah. So those are the worked examples. Um, do we have time for? Tell me to keep it short. So I've got another sort of real life scenario to demonstrate when filter might be used. So I'll go for it quickly. 
So this is the Trip, TripAdvisor website. Um, and you can see actually when filter might be used. So if I click on restaurants and I want to see restaurants in London, that's already a filter. Um, and then basically here I can apply further filters. So I might want to have say Italian food. What that's done is it's added the filters to the side here and it's basically returned me um, everything that's uh, passed that test that I've given it. So this is maybe an example of when you'd be using um, filter. Um, so if I go back to my Visual Studio, I've got an example here. So I've got an array of restaurants and I've got each restaurant um, is an object. And then you've got um, data within that object. So you've got the name, city, what type of cuisine it is, a star rating, and whether it's vegetarian friendly. So what I've said is the user wants to see a name of all the vegetarian friendly Japanese restaurants in London. So that's going to be three filters on this. So you've got four different restaurants. So what I want to do is what's a good name for this then? Um, preferred restaurants maybe. So that's just showing that it's um, an array of the restaurants that the person prefers. And I want to filter restaurants. Can you use an arrow pencil? Yeah, I can. <laughs> so what am I going to call each restaurant? Just restaurant. <laughs> And then what is the test that I want to do? So first of all, I want something that's vegetarian friendly. So I want to access the is veg friendly property of the object. Well, I was just going to do it in order of um, what it comes in the sentence. Yeah. So we'll start with vegetarian friendly first. So how would I access that then? What do I do? Yeah, restaurant dot, and then you can see here it's suggesting to me these are all the properties. So I want to select this one basically. And then I want to say if that is equal to um, yes. So I'm going to move this onto another line because this is getting. So that's got one condition at the moment. Um, so you can see it's returning me an array of the restaurants that match these criteria that I've given it. So it's filtered out one of the restaurants um, because this one isn't vegetarian friendly. So it's just giving me three. But what I want to do now is add more filters to this. So I can do like I did before. Tab across. So city, I want it to be in London. And I want the cuisine to be Japanese. So this will return me now one restaurant. So that was it basically. <laughs> I thought I'd just give a, um, a real life scenario of when you might want to use filter. Yeah, you've used an arrow function here, so oh, that. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom.